Bye everyone, stick around and I'll show you what we're using for our first grade math curriculum. Hi everyone, welcome back to Project Happy Home. Today's video is just a quick overview of what we've been using for first grade math and what is actually working for us. We use Singapore math as our core and I love it. I think it is super practical and speaks to the child and moves at a really reasonable pace. A lot of complaints about Singapore math is that it's more of a mastery curriculum and not a spiral curriculum. But at this stage of math, I don't have a problem with that because I feel like as you learn to add and subtract, that kind of builds upon itself as you gain in complexity. You don't really necessarily need to go back and spiral through again and again. Again, that's obviously individually dependent on your child. Um, Singapore math, the way it works is it has a workbook and a textbook. We started off using the US editions and I'm really quite happy with them. The textbook is very colorful. Um, it starts off with a table of contents here, which aligns with the table of contents in the workbook. So if you look at the table of contents in the textbook and the table of contents in the workbook, they'll both have the same title. So number zero to 10, number zero to 10, um, number bonds, number bonds, addition, addition, and so on and so forth. The way we do it is we will do um, the textbook sections and then move on through the exercises and then do another textbook section and move on through the exercises. When we do the textbook, I typically tend to just do that for the day and we don't do any writing for math. As you know, my son has ADHD, so sometimes when we can like diminish or decrease the writing exercises, that's a good little way of, of decreasing the stress on him. Um, and it starts off very basic just with counting and figuring out if things are more or the same, counting backwards, number bonds. As you can see, each of the pages is different. They like to talk a lot about number sentences and number bonds and uniting the concept of the different ways of making eight or the different ways of making a number. Um, they do a lot of number line kind of number sense, which I think is really helpful for children to understand the concept between a number line and addition in quantities. Um, my son really appreciates how quickly the pages move and how colorful they are. It goes on through shapes and weights. Um, in the workbook section, just to show you some of the pages, it is black and white, but a lot of the activities will involve coloring, so they add their own color. Um, and I'll just go through some of the exercises move really really quickly and some of them take a little bit longer so we don't necessarily do one exercise a day oftentimes we'll do more than that and I'll just flip through to show you uh, I thought it was cute how he added different types of flags there this is just um, and he moved quite rapidly through this book. I like that it was very um, stress-free on him. It, they definitely don't have lots and lots and lots of problems. It's designed for comprehension and we use the reviews as tests. So that's why you'll see like an actual grade there. And um, I give him a, a set time and we use those as, as test sections at the end. Um, but we have really been enjoying this. Right now he's on the second set for that, which is basically 1B. And um, we've been enjoying this as well. It kind of reviews a little bit because it goes back into grouping. But it then goes more into more complicated addition, some visual graphing, um, grouping again, shapes. Um, numbers, two-digit addition, two-digit numbers, things like that. So you can see the progression. And it starts doing some more word problems as well. And money. Because Singapore math doesn't really get into money until the end of the 1B workbook, I started him on the Kumon first book of money, counting coins as well. We've been enjoying this book. I'm not a huge fan of Kumon notebooks for some things because um, they have so much writing and so much rote repetition. But I do like this book very much because it goes in a very orderly progression through pennies and number sense. 
it has a lot of pages where they'll have um, pre-written uh, answers so they can understand exactly that a nickel is five cents, two nickels is 10 cents. They show the backs of the coins, which I like, and they actually have the photographs of the coins. So it's not a, a it's a perfect representation of the coins, which I like. And then it goes on and has reviews. Um, and it goes through each of the coins individually and then starts mixing them for review, which I like. Um, again, very colorful book. It goes straight through and it continues its pattern, if you'll notice, of having the first page with it already pre-answered for them. So it teaches them and then the next page will have blanks so they have an opportunity to demonstrate their knowledge there. Another thing we use are these Mind Benders puzzles by Critical Thinking Company. I really like this company, especially for logical thought. Um, we used to do these in Gifted when I was little and I was just thrilled to find them again. Um, the way the puzzles work is that you'll have like a few cute clues and based on those clues you have to eliminate the possibilities and figure out exactly who fits with whatever in the puzzle. So for example here a mom, a dad, a grandmother, and a grandfather all had dinner together find out what each person ate and you'll have three clues. So grandfather has no teeth so he had broth. So you can cross off our grandfather the hot dog and everything else and you know that he had broth. You know that nobody else had that and then so on and so forth and you solve the puzzle. He really loves these. He would do the entire book in a sitting if he could. We generally save these for when our regular math is over and this is our treat at the end. Another mind benders book that we use is the warm up deductive thinking skills. It's also logical thinking but these involve no writing. Basically they're just little puzzles. Um, Carl is Rose's husband, Mrs. Willows is Rose's mother, how is Carl related to Mrs. Willows? They're simple things, some of the things give us opportunities to learn family relationships and other things are just straight up logic. So Mandy believes that everyone should go to a dentist at least twice a year. Mandy knows her brother has been to a dentist only once in the last two years. What must Mandy believe about her brother? And the idea is that the child will say that her brother doesn't go to the dentist enough or something along those lines. Another book that we use is the um, by Carson DeLosa, the interactive math notebooks for grade one. I'm on the fence about interactive notebooks. Sometimes he really enjoys cutting and pasting. Sometimes I think it's a waste of time. I generally will make a copy of the page so that I can save it for my other children and then we'll paste it into his math interactive notebook. So then we take the photocopies, cut them out, and then make our own interactive notebook here. I made these interactive notebooks just by buying cardstock and then having them bound just to make it a little bit more sturdy. Um, we originally thought that this would just be for first grade, but I think this will probably be fat enough to last in maybe even through third grade. Um, and it's cute, it's fun. Sometimes we do it just for variety. Uh, my son doesn't enjoy them so much that we do them every day, maybe once a week or so. Um, if your child really enjoys cutting and pasting though, I really do like the Carson DeLosa um, interactive notebook. I kind of wish that they had made it so that you could just tear out the page and give it to the child, but they have the instructions on the opposite side, so you can't really do that because these instructions are for this page. Um, so I just make the copies and it's not an issue just to flip through to show you these are some of the activities that they have and it is a really nice way of just kind of reinforcing some of the concepts that they've already mastered another book we use is a book of mazes by kumon um i really like the kumon maze books i think they're super colorful and and fun and the way we do them is often we'll just time him and so you'll see this one says 40 seconds. Um, and this is probably our second or third Kumon Maze book for him. Uh, this is this one is the ages five, six, seven. It's a little bit easy still, but um, he's pretty good at mazes. I find that their younger maze book is a little bit complicated for my preschooler. So I think it definitely varies based on the child, but this is just a fun, 
additional math activity. Another thing we do in math is just drill work because I, as I said, the Singapore math is really a mastery curriculum. It does not beat them over the head with repetition. Sometimes, however, to memorize addition and subtraction facts, um, I want him to practice just drills. And these are just homework helper books that I bought, I think at a thrift store. And I like them because they're nice and colorful. And the way we do it is basically we just set a timer. So he did this whole page in two minutes. Um, we just set a timer and he does as many as he can, usually one, two, or three minutes. Um, it can be difficult for my son who has ADHD to just look at a page full of math problems and gear himself up to do it without having the emotional upset of, oh my goodness, there's so many problems left to do. So I like to set the timer for him so he knows it's going to end. It's a very short-lived experience, but he can still practice his um, drill work and reinforce those patterns. I think it's helpful to just have some drill books. So here's the addition one. And again, we just set a timer and you'll see like start two minutes and end. In terms of manipulatives, this is the kit that we use most. I bought this ages ago when Gabriel was probably about two um, from Amazon and it's really very simple. It's sort of like a Montessori based um, stick system. So if you want to see what it looks like, it's basically like this. It's just a little wooden box um, and it comes with the symbols for division, addition, subtraction, and equal sign. It has little number um, tiles as well. And then they can just separate them out into groups. So you can do very simple addition activities like this, five minus three equals, and they can just do five and then they can take away three and see that equals two. It gives them a nice little lightweight counting tool. Um, and we've just really enjoyed these. I think sometimes we use them for the preschooler just to count straight up and just list what five is and what three is. And it gives her a nice way of understanding um, quantities. Another manipulative I find really helpful for math studies is this type of divided cafeteria tray. When you have one of these, you can use anything for your counting manipulatives. For example, a jar of marbles. So one thing that's helpful about these is they make a really satisfying click, if you'll hear it. And so you have two plus two plus two, how many does it equal? And you put it into the big total one, and then you can count all of them and see that it equals six. Another thing you can do is just compare in these different trays what the difference between different numbers is. So one, two, three, four. Sometimes you can write down on little slips of paper or use those little tiles and put in one, two, and three and let the child decide. If you use dominoes, you can put one like this in here and say, how many is this total? And they can add up. They can put one there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. Eight. And then they can make a total and see how many they end up with. And so you can understand what addition is from this. I really like the divided trays. Even the two-year-old loves these. She just likes clamping them on there. It can get really annoying really quickly. But you can also use pom-poms that don't make noise. Arithmistics are another one of our favorite things to use for math. This comes in a beautiful box. They can slide off the lid. You can use a number line. The entire number line. And then you can line up some of them to add. So three. 4 plus 3 equals 7. And they can see it very easily on a, in a visual way. You can do division with these, which we haven't tried yet. You can do addition, multiplication, subtraction, missing numbers. So for example, 4 plus what equals 7? Well, what piece will get you there? The three will get you there. Um, for multiplication, it's interesting because four times
times 2 equals 8 times 3 equals 12 and it gives you a really quick way of seeing how those operations work and it comes in this really pretty divided tray so the pieces go all the way up to 10 and you have 10 little ones also and so on and so forth throughout just a really beautiful set there's also a blank number line so they can do addition without the answers already being there so if you see 4 plus 3 they can just count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so you can do counting activities as well they like how sturdy and tactile these pieces are we've had them for quite a few years and they are in exactly the same condition they were when we got them last but not least i've really enjoyed this book by peggy k called games for math um, it has really fun little ways of teaching number sense and just playing different games especially um, for the year coming up i really want to emphasize game playing in our homeschool it's something that doesn't come naturally to me and i I'm going to schedule it in every day so that my OCD can respond well to my son's love of games. For someone to whom games don't come that easily, this has been really, really helpful just to increase the amount of fun we have in our homeschool for math especially. I hope you enjoyed that little peek into our math curriculum. If you have any questions about it, please let me know down below in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. As always, thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to subscribe.